Well, g'day. Uh, today's little project is a modification, potentially, of a dodgy little... Oh, I was given this for free. Uh, what is it? It's a Logitech LS21. And it sounds pretty abysmal, but I thought, what sort of subwoofer has it got? I know this has a 4 watt RMS amplifier, giddy up. Looks like some cockroaches had a, had a go at the foam rolls around. But I thought, what happens when you don't do any calculations, you don't, you ignore box volumes, QVASs, Thiel and Small, all of those things for designing speakers, and you just whack a bigger driver in here, is it gonna sound any better? Well, I thought I'd better find out. Now, what I do in my spare time, apart from collect crap, is to, every time I get an old subwoofer or, or a speaker system, I take the driver out of it. So this one, for example, is a pretty meaty six inch LG unit. That's a five inch from a Logitech. Here we go. Got a pair of these bad boys. But unfortunately, nothing is the same. So these look the same, but they're not, so I couldn't use those to build a speaker system, for example. Because apparently for stereo you need at least two. But what I do have, I've got these two little fellas. So I reckon they look like they might just about fit. So let's take them over. Not gonna be a lot of science in this. It's pretty good, like that'll fit. That one'll fit. And this one, we get a tape measure on it. So this one is, I'll be stretching it to say it was uh, three inch. This one is definitely four inch. And if you go to the edge of the surrounds, it's five inch. And would this fit in the same cabinet? Look, it probably would with a little bit of modification to the case. Um, so I'm going to see if I can do this. I'm just going to I'll give you a bit of a demo to see how it sounds, and I know that YouTube is not the place to demonstrate speaker sound, so you'll just have to rely on my aging uh, auditory processing, but we'll see what it sounds like uh, as it is out of the factory. I don't, I've got some good old royalty-free music here. So that's what my, my phone sounds like. Here we go. There is a bass adjustment in the back. In summary, it sounds absolutely crap. That's absolutely maxed out. A little bit of cone excursion there. This sounds absolutely horrible. So yeah, this sounds absolutely horrible. So I'm going to unscrew this. I'll show you what's inside. We'll do a bit of a teardown and we'll uh, see if we can make it sound a bit better. All right. Let's see what's inside. Oh, that is the lightest, crappiest driver. Okay, what does it say? Eight ohms, five watts. You get just enough cable here. Get this table, cable tied up. I've unplugged this, but you get a tiny little transformer, a minuscule amplifier, and a baffle going all the way to the back that you just can't quite see the back of. Anyway, a uh, couple of filter caps down there, a bridge rectifier, a couple of diodes, and a decoding chip in the center there, and then a volume pot at the back. All right, let's pull this apart, make it happen. have a look this one doesn't quite drop straight in but it's pretty darn close so I reckon if I just have a bit of a play I can dummy this up so I've just measured the speaker with a set of calipers so I know basically how far I've got to make the bigger cut so pretty rough but this is all this project deserves and I'll cut this out, or I might even route that out. Um, and then I'll have to blow all the sawdust out from inside. And then 
I'll uh, do a proper test. I did a test before. It still sounds muddy and pretty horrible, uh, but I'm thinking that was not secured. The speaker was basically only half in the housing like that, so I'll, tr I'll try at least to do this properly, cut it out and see how it sounds. So just to recap, we're going from this heap of crap to this, well, looks like a much, much more decent speaker. It's rated apparently um, 6 ohms, 25 watts, although I wouldn't want to put 25 watts through that. And so from the top, from the side, and this one is probably three times the weight. Anyway, it fits in nice and snug. I've offset the holes so that I've still got a gas seal. So when you're doing this, make sure you match your polarity so that your speakers are still in phase. And it also looks a fair bit better too. Oh yeah, getting a nice tap out of that. Alright, turn this over. The way that Mr Logitech intended. Dust it off, I have given it a bit of a clean. We'll fire it up and see how it sounds. Right, we'll turn this on. Got a power light, it's good. A bit of hum coming through that uh, woofer, by the way. Still very drummy. So, is this a success? Yeah, it sounds a little bit better, but dodgy connection there. Certainly getting a lot more cone excursion. Look, I'd say this is a success. There's no baffling in this uh, little box here, which could be part of the problem. Uh, it still sounds pretty dreadful. Very woody, very muddy, not very tight bass at all, but it is bass. I mean, they were probably $20 speakers when they were released, and you get what you pay for. But like all Logitech, heavy on the bass, heavy on the treble and pretty much nothing in between and they trick you into making it thinking it sounds good by having a much much heavier and woollier bass than you would otherwise expect still a bit of a success I'm not going to try this there's no way that this driver is going to fit in there and it's just going to sound the same uh, but I'll leave this in and see if I can turn this uh, use this somewhere around the house righto last thing I'm going to do turn that volume all the way up Other way, Dopey. Turn the bass all the way up at the back. So get that bass cranking. And let's see how we go. Yeah, that is certainly working. High frequencies. So be aware, this is as loud as this little thing will go. Find a bit of air movement, 27 hertz. It's a practical bottom end of this thing. So you're getting some movement, 30 hertz, 25, 24, even out of 16 hertz. That's not bad. But no actual sound, but we are getting speaker uh, excursion there. All right. 
So I'd say 30 hertz actually is about the limit of this thing. Not bad. All right, that's that. And it will be okay, except it does have a hum, which you can't hear, but it does have a hum when you power it on for the first time. And again, another thing that I found out is that I can still hear that hum through this uh, subwoofer, even with the power off. If I turn the power on, doesn't get louder. Turn the power off, still there. Probably the filter caps in the power amplifier, I would suggest, but I'm not changing them. One last crack at the championship with this speaker. I'm going to put some baffling in here just to see if it takes away some of that horrible muddiness. So this is actually genuine speaker baffling that I've got, and I reckon this is probably about right. So we have one last look inside. The baffle actually goes all the way down behind the and underneath the PCB and the amplifier. So if I kind of shove it in all around, I don't think I'll impact the, um, the baffle effect for the port. I'll just put a baffle in and it should work. Let's give it a crack. Okay, that's pretty tight in there. I still want some room in there for the air movement to flow around. Still rubbish so hasn't done anything throw these in the bin they're not worth anything even with this new driver um, you know I really thought I might be able to get something out of that but it looks like the original speaker which is this tiny tinny little piece of crap from Logitech is actually probably a pretty good match for these so really you can't improve on what Logitech has already done they sound it sounds marginally better but it's so boomy and so horrible that it's just not worth listening to so this is the original speaker and I put that back in and you can see my dodgy cutout from putting this little woofer in and I'm, I've also tried it with this crappy speaker I don't even know where I got this it looks like a kit speaker 8 ohm 5 watts and I've also hooked it up to this behemoth here um, out of an LG subwoofer system and I'll show you quickly the difference and basically we're no better off is the conclusion so I'll show you what I mean so just to recap this with the factory speaker now this is going to sound truly appalling and drummy so this one definitely has better bass but it still sounds and I can still feel some hum coming through there it still sounds so muddy that I actually think that the original speaker is the better pick overall this is just a bit overpowering and it's just a bit too muddy Right, let's do some frequency sweeps. So I'm going to start at 10 hertz. Now you can see, probably see I've got some warble and some flutter there, but no actual noise. So by 20, 25 hertz, certainly got some nice ex cone excursion there. Try this super crappy speaker. Right, it's 26 hertz. Absolutely, I can feel a bit of flutter on my finger there, but nothing that you can hear. 
so about practically about 48 hertz go back to the original okay that's pretty solid that's at 36 hertz So a fair bit of excursion there, 23 hertz. Now this is all cranked up as loud as that little 4 watt amplifier will go. So 32 hertz, not bad. Now what if we put this big fella in? So this is a 50 watt 8 ohm speaker. So we're not getting a maximum power transfer here because we're matching an amplifier designed to output at 4 ohms to a speaker with an impedance of 8 ohms. And that doesn't actually fit in the enclosure, but this is just to give you a bit of an idea. All right. And because this speaker is harder to drive and less less efficient, it's actually even though it's at 50 hertz, and I can feel that. This is actually a worse speaker than the smaller one, just because it's going to require a lot more power to drive, and this little tiny little amplifier just does not have the grunt to drive it. Alrighty, back to the factory original. 30 hertz. There's very little frequency content and music down around here, but it's pretty solid at 35 hertz. Pretty impressed. So that's a wrap. This is this really shows that the speakers that these come with from Logitech really can't be improved on. So I put baffling in here. I changed all sorts of drivers. Uh, obviously, I didn't put a bigger amplifier in, which is kind of you know a bit a bit silly. Uh, but it's really proven that mi mixing and me messing with uh, the Logitech factory formula is a bit of a waste of time. Now, I've actually pulled this apart because the original plug was stuffed, the three and a half mil plug. So I've actually soldered on a replacement plug because the other one was having uh, dropouts so the dropouts that I was experiencing before were not because of the headphone socket in my phone they were because of the dodgy plug <laughs>